All right, today we're going to be talking about the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now, we've done a lot of work with derivatives, and today we're actually going to work with the derivative and come a, a graph uh, uh, of the derivative, and we're going to try to come up with the original function that that derivative, when it was taken, turns into this. So this is the derivative y equals f of x. And it wants me to come up with the graph, the original graph, that, that the derivative was taken of. So when we have y equals f of x, now this is going to be considered the graph we're going to look at, we want to see, well, what was the graph that the derivative was taken from to get this? So if we do the antiderivative of this, we should get back. It's like antidote, right? And we know the fundamental theorem of calculus is if you take the integral of the derivative, you should get the original function. So the antiderivative of f of x, this, will give you the original graph, g of x. And we're going to come up with g of x, which is this graph down here. This is the original graph. Derivative was taken to get this graph. Now we're going to try to take the antiderivative of this to get this graph. Okay? Now, if you can see up here, this has to be kind of adjusted. This should be more like this, okay? Since we have a nice box there. And you can see down here, uh, it's drawn a bit better. Now, the uh, first thing is you will be given one point on g of x. You kind of need that. Uh, so if you look at... Um, any of the practice tests and everything. They usually give you this, okay? That's what this says here. Will be given, but it kind of got erased on the side there. Now, so let's, f uh, first of all, we know that g of 0 is 0. So when you come down, you can see 0, 0 is one point on our graph. Now, the areas underneath each, at like the area from 0 to 1, will be the coordinate of the new graph. Okay, let me show you how that's done. Okay, so let's look at g of 1. Now g of 1, and actually come over here, it's a bit better. g of 1 will equal g of 0 plus the area from 0 to 1. And you always want to make sure that these two are the same here. Okay? So g of 0 is 0. Okay, we already know that from this. Now, what is the area from 0 to 1? Now, the area from 0 to 1 would be 1 half AB, right? 1 half, uh, and you can go BA, AB, doesn't matter. Uh, I went 1 times 2, which equals 1. So, the area from 0 to 1 is 1. So, 0 plus 1 equals 1. So, the new coordinate of your original graph is 1, 1. Now, let's find g of 2. g of 2 states that if you know the area from here to here already, let's add this area and we'll find what g of 2 is. So, from uh, we don't have to go from 0 to 2. We can go from 0 to 1, which we've calculated here, plus 1 to 2. Okay? So then we'd have, uh, this is actually g of 1 right here. should write this out. g of 1 is 1 plus this new area here, and I've drawn it here, which is 1 times 2, which is 2. So g of 2 equals 3. 1, b from g1, and then now we have done this part here. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 plus 3 is 3. So the area from here to here is actually 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. So 2, 3 is the coordinate on g of x. You see, the area will always be the y-coordinate. Okay, now g of 3, 
would be g of 2 plus, and you see how that should be from 2 to 3. I don't know if that looks like a 3. The original that I put on the uh, website is a lot clearer than this. Um, so you go from uh, 2 to 3 now. Now from 2 to 3 is another triangle. Okay, so we're dealing with this triangle right here. So that's 1 half AB again, and that would be 1 times 2 times 1 would be 1. So remember 3 with G of 2 plus 1 is 4. So 3 comma 4 is now the coordinate of G of X. Okay? So we've got 1, 1 because the area from here to 1 is 1. It's from 2, when X is 2, the area under is 3. When, the, uh, when X is 3, the area is 4. Okay? Now, we have now this part, which is under the graph. And remember, every area under the graph when you do antiderivatives is a negative. Right? Now, why did I put two negatives there? Because I'm going to deal with it as two triangles. Okay? So, how do I do G of 4? Well, it's G of 3. Do you see? And from 3 to 4 is negative 1 half. Now, why is it negative? Because it's under the x-axis. Negative 1 half to 1 times 2, which gives me negative 1. 4 and negative 1 is 3. So 4, 3 is the area now from here to here. G of 5 is 5. Uh, sorry, G of 5 is G of 4 plus from 4 to 5. And you see how this is here. And from 4 to 5 is another triangle right here. Negative 1, negative one half, 1 times 2. And you get negative 1. So you get 3, negative 1, which is 2. So 5, and what's the area from 0 to 5? It's 5, and the area would be 2. So g of 0 is 0. g of 1, now remember, these are all areas in here. g of 1 is 1. g of 2, area is 3. g of 3, the area is 4. G of 4, the, entire, the area is 3, because 4 minus 1. And then G of 5, what's the area? Well, it is 3, or sorry, um, well, this is, uh, I'm getting messed up here. Oh yeah, this entire area is 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. So, and again, I've reiterated. So now I plot these points. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 3, and 5, 2. And now, you see this is the original graph. Okay? So when I take the antiderivative, I get the areas. The areas turn into the y values. And remember back to uh, when we were doing derivatives, if this was the original graph, does this make sense that this is the derivative? Well, we've got 0, 0, okay? And then do you see how my slope is positive all the way to 3, 4? See? Slope is positive all the way to 3, 4, and then it is 0 at 3, 4. See? Slope would be 0. Then it is negative, right? Going all the way to here, which is 5, 2. But in our case, 5, 0 in this graph. But you see, because 0 means 0 slope. And you can see this is probably leveling out here. So that's why we have our 0 slopes. So we got positive and we got negative. Just like we have positive. This is all positive. We have 0 and then we have negatives. Okay? So that's the way that we would take. So if I took the derivative of this graph, I would get f of x. If I take the antiderivative of this graph, which is f of x, I get g of x. And the fundamental theorem of calculus is if you take the antiderivative of the derivative, you should get back the original. Okay, so there is questions like this on your uh, review that I'm going to give you. And uh, I have this sheet up on my website.